Uh, so let's start by talking about what exactly social psychology is. So when I say the word social, what comes to mind is probably like uh, groups of people, different people, having friends, relationships. And that's exactly what social psychology is. It's basically the psychology of other people. When other people are around, we kind of change our behavior. When we change our attitudes. It might be influence us. So people, other people have an effect on us. Every day we spend most of our time with other people. And so that's kind of a very important thing to study. So social psychology is the study of how other people affect our thoughts, feelings, and our behaviors, right? So how they not just affect how we act, like if you're in a classroom, uh, you'd be kind of more like uh, controlled, attentive, versus if you're watching like an online video, like you're now, you're probably more likely to be dist distracted doing different things. And so the th questions we ask is how, what we think about uh, influence and relate to one another. So what we think about inside our head is kind of influenced and how is it related to other people. So let's look at some of the topic that we'll be encountering in the realm of social psychology. We're going to go through kind of three large domains, social thinking, social influence, and social relations. Under social thinking, how we think about the world, the things we talk about are going to be like social attitudes, our attributions of each other, and also the idea of persuasion, how we influence, uh, how we try to change our attitudes. Under social influence, we talk about how our behavior is actually uh, affected by other people. So ideas like conformity and obedience come into play. Finally, in social relations, we talk about how we relate to one another. So we talk about things like prejudice and discrimination, hate, and then also the flip side, which is love and relationships, families, girlfriends, boyfriends, so on and so forth. So let's start with social thinking. And so social thinking is when, how we think about social targets. How I think about myself is a social target. How I think about other people. How I think about other events. Do I like President Obama? Do I like his policies? Uh, do I like people who disagree with his policies? Those are all kind of thinking that goes on. Okay. So today we're going to talk about several kinds of um, social perception. How we perceive and understand our world. And the first thought is attribution. How we perceive the cause of other people's behavior. So when we see other people act, we have to understand, our brain has to understand uh, why are they acting that way. Right? We have to figure out why they act that way. Uh, certainly it's not at random or completely spastic. It has to be, there has to be a cause involved in it. And our brain is very good at looking for causes. Right? So there's basically two causes that we could think of. There's an internal cause. They did that because something about them did it. Or an external cause. They did that because something of the environment caused them to do it. So for example, um, if your girlfriend breaks up with you, an internal reason might be, well, maybe she doesn't like me. She just doesn't like me. An external reason would be like, well, she's moving, or her parents don't like me, and so her parents forced her to break up with me. Right? So something about the situation caused her to, do, to act that way. Now when early psycho uh, social psychologists thought about how is it that we make these attributions? How is it that we decide whether someone did something internally or externally? Why do they do it? There's certain three types of information that we could look at. The first one is, well, in the same situation, what are other people doing? How often does this person do this thing? And finally, does this person do it in the similar situations? I'll give you a quick example. For example, I'm teaching, which I am now, and I see a student sleeping in class. So that's the kind of behavior that I kind of frown upon. It's like, no, you shouldn't be sleeping in class. So why is a student sleeping in class? And there's two reasons, right? There's an internal one. The student is lazy, or the student is really tired. Or number two, something about the situation. Maybe the class is just super boring, and that they fall asleep because the class is so boring. Now, how would I determine which is the correct attribution? I would answer these three questions. For example, I would look at consensus. What are other people doing? If other people are also sleeping in the classroom, a lot of people are sleeping, then it's a pretty good guess that something about the class is really boring. Maybe the class is just really early or really late at night and people are just tired. So let me give you an example of how this would work out. Suppose I'm teaching, which I am, and I look into my classroom and I see someone sleeping. And that's kind of offensive behavior to me, that's like a no-no, right? And I have to think about why is it that the